another stress video, but this time the stress is different. Today we're talking about shear stress, not normal stress. So what is shear stress? Remember what we talked about last time when we said we can, remember when we cut a beam? Okay, here's your beam. And we cut it in half, and what do you have when you cut a beam? You must have a M and V. Okay, so N, the, the normal force, what we talked about in the last video, is that stress that's making you stretch longer or shorter, right? V, look where it's going. It's going perpendicular to that cut plane there, okay? And that's the force that's trying to go, uh, right? One is going up, one's going down, and so you get this kind of uh, tearing, right? We said that uh, what tool do you have in your kitchen that uh, was shears? Scissors, and what's the international sign for scissors? B, okay? So, and how do scissors work, right? One side comes up, the other side goes down, and it shears the material. So that's what we're talking about today is shear stress. How much can the material hold when I have a force going like that, right? What's the intensity of the force? So guess what we get on our equation sheet over here? A new equation for the day. And that equation goes like this. Okay? Tau equals, and let me, I'm just gonna change this, okay? I'm gonna put, just so we're clear on that, I'm gonna put an N there for normal, right? Because it's that one that does normal stress, and it's V that contributes to shear stress, okay? So that's that force that's tearing it in half in that direction, okay? Now that we have one more additional equation, and this equation, this is the Greek letter tau uh, for shear stress. The, the equation goes exactly the same as it did up here. V is just a force, and so A is area, and so the units are exactly the same. But it's a different kind of stress than normal stress, so you, got, you, you can't get those two confused. And the way I think about shear stress is just a tearing stress. Just if it, it's trying to tear something in half, okay? And let's see, what else do I have over here? Oh yeah, how about this one? Tau equals uh, V over 2A, okay? So what you can have here is you can have shingle, single shear, say that three times fast, <laughs> or you can have double shear. The 2A is for two areas because you're having to shear through twice as much area as you do for a single shear. So let's look at a problem, bam, and let's see if we can see that, okay? Now where we see she well, the shear that we're looking at here, this one says find the shear stress on the 20 millimeter pins at A and B. So we have a pin connection here and a pin connection there. Now in statics, a pin connection was a pin connection. Who cares, right? But in solids, when you say you got a pin connection, you want to like, okay, what kind of pin connection is it? Is it a single or is it a double shear, right? Uh, and, and here's some pictures, right? Here's some exploded views of that pin. So here you can see there's two, and then the, the, the beam is in the center there. The pin goes through the whole thing. So in order to tear that loose, what do you have to do? You would have to tear through here and through there, right? So that's what a double shear pin would look like, okay? This one over here, right? If I pull on this one that way, right? Whoop, and pull on this one this way, then I have to shear that pin, but how many times do I have to shear that pin to make it fail? I only have to make it shear whoop, right through there one time to make it fail. That is single shear. So this is single, and this is double. Okay? And on these problems, they'll have a little blow up of the, of the pin. They have to tell you something about the pin so you know, are we talking single shear or are we talking double shear? So, how do we find V, the shear force on the pin. Well, you know what we have to do? You're not gonna believe this. We're gonna have to do some statics. What? Yes. And that would start with, what do we start every problem off with? Free body diagram. Let's draw this beam here, okay? Here's the beam. That's a great beam. <laughs> what do you do? What is this guy over here? What is BC? It's pin connected at both ends, no forces in the middle. That's a two force member. That's right. And as I pull down on this, I'm stretching that guy so he's in tension so I can feel him pulling on me, right? 
So this is FBC, okay? And remember, FBC also has, um, he's going to have two components, isn't he? And he's a three, four, five. So he's going to have one here and one there. And this one's going to be FBC times how much? Remember, the X uses the X side of the triangle over the hypotenuse, so three-fifths. And this one up here, four-fifths, FBC, okay? Guys, in solids, you're going to be expected to know this, like, automatically. You're not going to have to be like, I have to go back and review statics. You're going to be in trouble, okay? we got to just know. Okay, and then what else goes on our beam? Over here, A is a pin connection. Now, for statics, I don't care that it's a double or single. All I, all I care about is a pin connection. So it's going to have an AY and an AX. And then over here is that 50 kilonewton load, okay? So which way does AX have to go? Well, that one goes to the right, so this one needs to go to the left. And which way does AY have to go? I think probably up. And at this point, I can still guess. If I get it backwards, I'll just get a negative. But I don't think I'll get a negative, right? Okay, so how about um, some of the moments at point A? And what do we get? We get the 50 rotating as negative. So minus 50 times how far away from point A is that? Well, it's two. It's two. And then I get this guy's a cha-cha force. Cha -cha, right? He goes through point A. Then I got that guy, which rotates me mm, positive plus four-fifths. FBC times how far away is that guy? Two plus four, how about six? Okay. All right, calculator. So a hundred, a hundred times five divided by four, right, equals six FBC. 500 divided by four is 250, 125. So 125 over six equals FBC. And how much is that? All right. On 125 divided by 6, 20.83. So now I know that guy, FBC, right? 20.83, okay, kilonewtons. And how do I find AX? Well, AX is going to be equal to that guy right there. So that would be 20.83 times 0. 0.6, which is 12.5 kilonewtons. And then AY, right, the two up stuffs have to equal the down stuff, right? So sum of the forces in the Y equals AY plus that guy, 0. 8 times 20.83 minus 50. And so AY equals what? 50 minus 0.8 times 20.83, 33.34. So AY kilonewtons. Okay. So that goes here, 33.34 kilonewtons, okay? So you see how we got that? That, that was a statics problem, man. You see how important statics is? Come on, y'all. Luckily, you had the world's greatest statics teacher, didn't you? Well, only if you followed my statics series, then you did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see uh, if we can do this now. Next, we got to do this, okay? So we're going to have one case of single shear, one case of double shear. The single shear is at pin B, and the double shear is at pin A, okay? So at, let's do pin A. Let's do pin A. That's the double shear, okay? So tau at point A is equal to, okay, what is V? What is V? Well, you know what? All of these are going to have the same A, aren't they? We have a 20 millimeter diameter pin, okay? So A is equal to pi times 10 squared, which is equal to 314.16 uh, 
uh, millimeter squared, okay? So here we go. The force at point A. What's the force on the pin at A? Well, you got 12.5 in the X and you got 33.34 in the Y. So how do you find the, the, the resultant on A, the total effect of, of those two forces? Squared, squared, take square root, right? So here we go. 12.5 squared plus 33.34 squared equals inverse square root answer equals 35.6. Okay. Well, wait a minute. How come it, you said 35.6, but you wrote 35,606? Because this was given in kilonewtons, okay? So I, I just found that in kilonewtons, and then I just turned it into newtons, right? Because kilo is times 10 to the 3, so I just moved the decimal over one, two, three places, and I get this, right? Clever, because what is my area going to be? It's going to be 2 times... 314.6 or 16 millimeters squared. Okay? And now what is newtons over millimeters squared? That makes sense to me, right? Oh, that's that's megapascals, isn't it? So here we go. Th uh, 35 606 divided by 2 divided by 314.16 equals 56.67. Okay. I'll do this a bunch. I'll, I'll get everything in newtons and meters or newtons and millimeters. So in my mind, I know, oh, that's a megapascal. Okay. All right. So the next one's going to be what? Tau for point B. Now you'll notice the two there for the double shear, right? Now we're doing the single shear case. What's the force on this pin? Well, the force on that pin is completely, there's just one force on it. It's 20.83, okay? So 20, ooh, I'm going to do this, 830 newtons because 20.83 was kilonewtons. Divided by the area, 314.16 millimeters squared. All right, and so what do I have there? Two, zero, clear, clear, come on. Two, zero, eight, three, zero. Divided by 314.16 is 66.3. Okay, so as the engineer, what am I really going to be concerned with? Okay, pin A is not going to fail because the stress, the shear stress, the intensity of the force is much less. It's not much less, but it is less than the intensity of the force, the shearing force over at pin B. Okay, and so there you go. That is shear stress both single and double shear. Piece of cake, right? Hope this helps. I'll see you next time.